We must remember that this is an uneven pandemic. Ten countries account for 70 percent of all reported cases and deaths, and just three countries account for half. Dr. Mike Ryan will give a more detailed epidemiological analysis. Not all countries have responded the same way, and not all countries have been affected the same way. There are roughly four different situations that countries are facing. First, some countries act decisively and quickly and have avoided large outbreaks. Second, some countries have had large outbreaks but were able to bring them under control and continue to suppress the virus. Third, while some countries brought the virus under control, as economies and societies have eased restrictions, there has been an increase in cases. And fourth, there are still some countries that are in the intense phase of transmission. What we have learned in every region of the world is that with strong leadership, clear and comprehensive strategies, consistent communication, an engaged, empowered, and enabled population, it's never too late. Again, it's never too late to change any kind of tide. Every situation can be turned around and hard-won gains can be easily lost. The pandemic underlines the fundamental importance of investing in public health and primary health care, even as we fight the virus. COVAX is supporting the development of nine vaccines with more in the pipeline. 168 countries and economies are covered by the COVAX facility representing more than two-thirds of the world's population. And we are still in discussion with another 25 <laughs> countries. All of this has only been possible because of the power of partnership. WHO doesn't have the mandate or the capacity to do everything. But we do have the unique mandate and capacity to coordinate the global response by harnessing the collective strengths of our many partners across the UN system and beyond. And it has only been possible because of you, because of you, our member states. This is your WHO. Our first priority must be to keep people healthy and out of hospitals by addressing the root cause of disease in the air people breathe the food they eat, the water they drink, and the environment in which they live and work. When people do need health services, those services must be accessible, affordable, and high quality. And just as many countries invest heavily in their military capacity in case of conflict, so they must invest in robust public health capacities to prepare for, prevent, detect, and respond rapidly to outbreaks when they occur. Wrong pause. We're on the right path, but we need to go faster. We need to go further. And we need to build on the transformation. We need to go together. Excellencies, the pandemic is a wake-up call for all of us. We must all look in the mirror and ask what we can do better and learn honestly. Following your guidance, I have initiated several reviews through the Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response, the International Health Regulation Review Committee, and the Independent Oversight and Advisory Committee for the WHO Health Emergencies Program. I look forward to their findings and recommendations and to building on our transformation to strengthen global preparedness and response. <laughs>